ladies and gentlemen, championship point. We're gonna throw it over to our casters. Take it away. One game away from the trophy. One game away from glory. One game away until the kingdom finally rejoices. It is game number six, match point for Arkyoshi against Team Liquid ID. The cavalry will not have it. They will not have it without a fight. Fabian on the lane. The usurper wants the throne. He wants the crown. Ladies and gentlemen, in the land of Don we go for a possible final game in the series, but a possible comeback to equalize on the board from the Cavalry. A signature strategy from the Cavalry. Great macro presence, great dive in the team fights. And look at that, even in the lane, this Lunox pick certainly is a curveball. RRQ, can they withstand it? Can they find ways to kite back far enough? Skyler, has the guy with me. Flickers forward, finds first blood, will be taken down. But that is a way, that is a cannon minion they, that he will lose on top of his life. Oh, Skyler gets assassinated. Yaskiel burns his flicker. And this lane, the Aerithal against the Lunox. Talk to me about that lane, Arashi. The Aerithal against the Lunox, they have so much more sustain built into the Lunox, more burst damage too. So the traits that usually the Aerithal can win by being more maneuverable, by just having a lot more burst in the kit, can't really be exploited to the same degree, but look at this! Super on the Julian, knocked out by Fabian, oh. slain by Fabian. The mercenary down, the usurper will take that kill. Now Tyron, trying to stop the farm from being taken, but again for Fabian, it's like taking candy from a baby. He's just oh. taking away Tyron. Dovon, Witty, will try to tank it up. Tyron low, Aran tanking it up. Fabian just needs one more shot to find and play to take him down. Brings an Edoff, rotating up top, Witty. So trying to heal off, Fabian will let that happen. The Shadow Stampede before he backs away. In front of Pursuit, Edoff will get away. They were juggling the aggros to dive into Tyron, and Tyron has to die, but CLID, they come out unscathed. They run. Oh. Gotta respect the Sutujin saving the chain, saving the inside. side. Aeron still able to sustain for a bit. Another level of the state, but Skyler with a crossbow will get it again on the board for RRQ. Great move by Sutujin to just be patient with the usage of the skills there, ensuring that he has it guaranteed. But with that play on the bottom side, more cryo for him to get to the top side. The turtle and a purple ball. Last time Darren was able to get a miraculous death to the spawn. Will he be able to find it? Wow! A run takes it for him as he goes for the infra pursuit. Fabian gets a turtle. He gets the Tempest of Blades and Darren will fall for the second time this game. The usurper blunders the resources of the kingdom. But that was a run jumping into the back line and giving path for Fabian. Damn it's a witty man. And Aran is running the vengeance too, so even in the late game, if the idea is to just burst down this Phobius, Team Liquid ID has a lot more solutions to try and make that play happen. Oh, baby Sam's running to the back, no purify for Skyler! Good Netherrealm baiting Witty, Skyler throws the crossbow. Up top and down below, that is Witty again, taken out. That was almost a kill and a half for Witty. He was able to raging Sandstorm forward, thankfully Rims was close by. You're buying the block, and he pops the Netherrealm. Fabian actually out farming Sutsujin at this point in time. Skyler actually gets the cart well, held onto him by Rinse. Great coordination as a team there, but Fabian has gotten the Berserker's Fury. Already a big power spike, and every single lane for RRQ is actually in a losing position. The EXP, the gold, and the mid lane all pressured down. Even the jungle to so RRQ are playing it super defensive. I'm talking to a bot. That's true. We talk about the losing lane for Arashi, but Skylar is able to collect two kills. Do you think that is still a losing lane for him? Uh oh. Byron. It's gonna be the engage. That's his welcome coming down. Aran. Trying to tank up the turret. He doesn't get picked up. Oh. He doesn't find oh. the wall. Oh. Gets another kill without the purple buff. And it's still off. Take a look at this. He's delayed the purple off take so that he has it for the turtle. Good brilliance to escape. He's not gonna be taken low. Aran Shiki will go for it. Finds the kill. Hard guard over. Flicker oh. and What's the cavalry to keep fighting? What's the cavalry to keep charging? Chaos Shiki with the double kill. He's able to stampede on the kingdom. Two kills for himself and TLID. They gallop into the castle walls. Oh man, that's a great fight by Team Liquid ID winning across the board. RRQ 
the issue right now is so many players, so many members of Team Liquid ID can really go invulnerable. The Tempest of Blades, the Brilliant Order, so many ways to outplay, but Widi, the Sand Guard, getting him a bit of HP. That's a Flaker Shadow Stampede to pull him back, but Widi was able to get the Raging Sands on now. Aaron, putting some damage back. Skylar, a heavy crossbow starting to hurt now, but Aaron will be able to respect it, will be able to get the healing from Yehezkiel, who has rotated bottom lane. Three of the four kills only onto Widi, though. Definitely far from ideal for RRQ. The gold lead, however, was it at 3,000 more or less. Now it's down to 2,000. You're seeing the mid game here for RRQ looking a bit more alive, especially with the power spikes for Skylar. Being a crit build, you actually get a bit more value from the first few items compared to the whole shred that requires the Trinity to really get things going. But of course, Davian has a lot of damage. Oh. Really trade, hard guard comes down. Skylar able to escape her now. Julian, Sutsujin. Walking to the bottom lane, Aaron will just shove this wave to get in the heart guard on him still. To get Pryo on the map, meanwhile Fabian up top, get in the turret, that is a tier 1. Look at how much attention they're giving towards Skylar. Skylar's just getting bullied over and over again by Witty and, and the Lunox in the hands of Aaron Shiki. The rotations just pulling apart the players of RQ. Rinse. Stampede, Aaron! No flicker, oh. dead. On the brilliance, chaos oh. to escape. Ron jumps into the midst of it all to help his teammate, Circling Eagle, to knock two up. But Witty's right there to prevent that from being a full dive. All right, you're transitioning to more of an Ube style here. You can see it. They're moving together as a unit. It almost seems like right now, the deciding factor is whether or not Rins can make the right call. If he follows the movements of Team Liquid ID and identifies which lane is going to be under aggression from the cavalry, then he can use a netherrealm to negate that whole outcome and keep the game going just that much longer into that mid-game that Araki can use. Well, we talk about the DLID composition. They're more of a dive composition, but you talk about how Aran is there to become the front line. You have the pure as well from Witty. How is the Julian supposed to access the back line? Oh! What happens? Enhanced sword trying to run away. Netherrealm already made it out now. Temple the Blaze on the Sutsuchin, who will follow the mercenary down. Skyler very low. Maybe leave for the Blaze again as it put a push no! back on two! The Demonic Force Brox are eternal! Aran will continue to zone him away, but a stampede brings him back. Aran will jump in. If you're gonna kill me, it'll be on my terms. Just relentless aggression. That is the way the Fovius operates. That's a, gonna be a neutral objective. Some turrets as well for Team Liquid ID. Extending that goal into 4K. RRQ making maneuvers happen, trying their best to read into Team Liquid ID. But there's just so many tools to kind of keep your eyes on. The Raging Sandstorm, the Tempest of Blades, and now Susujin. Oh, purple buff, stolen Fabian, stealing it away. This time Aaron has the flicker, so RRQ will not continue that chase. Susujin so pulverized, torn apart by the cavalry. He hasn't been able to become online. Oh, three on the Julian. If the Julian is this beaten into a pop, how effective it is going to be as the time progresses, Arashi? Fortunately for the, for the Julian, you can kind of still operate as a card control tool, technically with an enhanced chain. But ideally for Sisogen, he still wants some more damage. But Skylar face checks! Raging Sandstorm over to Skylar, has a heavy crossbow, has this Shadow Sampy to help him as well. Zeta walks forward, Witty will actually be threatened there. Now able to heal back up, Aaron. That's a big power spike. Second item, Holy Crystal. Talk to me about this, Arashi. It's more, more scaling, right? More numbers to really add damage to your kit. And for now, there's not really a lot of magic damage, especially in the one v one against Skylar and magic defense. I mean, so Aaron can really abuse this, and he's been playing very aggressively because he knows he has an invulnerability tool to get out of the ganks of our Q. They don't have a lot of repeated engagements, but look at that, Witty, Stampede, Witty. And half Shane finding him, Witty will not try to commit any of his resources. Heck, he doesn't have any resources to spend, but Fabian, on oh. the other hand, oh, the Usurper will stay busy. Flavor Fave with a tier 2 traded for the Roamer's life. Tyron, unable to get that cheeky dance in his welcome. The flicker was not up. He's turbo farming his items, right? Three item power spike, BOD completed. And now the question becomes, how, are, are, how is RQ going to match that side lane pressure? The TLID will constantly have in the hands of Fabian. I don't think they have any easy way of doing so. The best they can do is use Mathilda to kind of elevate their movement around the map. But even then, the way that RQ is playing this Uwe against this Assassin just makes it so difficult for them to actually get any winning circumstances. And keep in mind, later on with the with the Vengeance, a run can last a lot longer in the front line. Mm -hmm. So it really feels like RRQ have to fade out some spells and then make their way back in. Use the Mathilda oh. Guiding Wind to just allow themselves 
to, to bait out some of the resources. Because in a full on 5v5, I don't see them coming out of cloth. No. Oh, God. In a 1v3 so far, not even. Yeah, they're all running away for dear lives. And look at that. The Lord free, conceded by RRQ. They can't really pressure back to Eli. Oh, Skyler. Good poke. That's an ultimate down, though. Lord is still pushing on the top side. And the top above always, Team of ID. Playing classic. The right way to just shut down your opposing your opposing jungler. Just keep going for these invades, knowing that you have the frontline advantage, you have the damage advantage, you have the macro advantage even. There's not much that RRQ can do here without really making a lot of sacrifices elsewhere. They have total control on the second half of the map. The Lord even wanting to siege towards the turret! And Ron Shaker, the Ruby BB combo. Diamond taking very long. Nether is safe with Avengers partner in for a run. Coming to play from Fabian. Diamond trying to go for the death as well. Come on, we'll not be able to find a Fabian now! What's oh. going on? Diamond, oh. why did he pull Fabian? Fabian? And the Usurper shall fall in the hands of the Mercenary. Skyler on the chase for you, has kill. But TLID, they back away. They think it's worth it to trade Fabian for the base turret. And I think they were right to make that call. Again, the soldiers of the kingdom. They hug the crown prince, protect it with their palm of the hands, and Fabian, he falls down in that altercation. That is a bold move from Tinegar ID to go for a dive under a turret against a Faramis, against a Julian. Wow, they just kept going for it. And I really believe, obviously, that the that the plan wasn't really trade Fabian for that pickup. But hey, no. a familiar face, LJ. Of course, FBLIDX streamer presented to you by or coffee. Good day. He's out there. He's out there, man. Just lingering, just watching. There you go. Oh, revelation. He realizes. There you go. Woo. Double man. Oh, what the heck was that? Where did Enoch go, Fabian? What did I mean? Over the rims this time. Double play two stop, Tyron. Double round cancel. And there you go, Rapey Sands are number two. Darren still has immortality, but now it's gonna be Aran with Infernal Pursuit in towards the base. No minions, they will lose Aran. But they've taken Edoch and Dyron down. Oh, they're knocking on the doorsteps of the castle that the kingdom has been able to build. But I feel like no, they don't want to exert even more pressure. They will back away. Discipline, as they've learned from their mistakes. There's nothing to get right now on the map anyways. I think that what that was is Team Liquid ID making a statement to RRQ. Hey, you're gonna walk out of your base, you have to remember that we are danger. And we will punish you if you just overstep your limits. Purple buff secured by Sysogen though. And you're seeing level 15 for both junglers. RRQ slowly but surely trying to catch up with the farm. But man, when it comes to pressure, nothing they can do right here. Tyron taking so much damage only with a handful of spells. Is there a scenario where RRQ is able to match TLIB in a 5v5 lore take? The longer the game goes, in theory with the Netherrealm, it is possible. But the problem is, people with ID don't have to go for that. They have the macro play with the Angela, with the Link. Mm -hmm. How would they go for a frontal 5v5 against a Faramis, against a Marksman? Go ready. Oh, ready. Looking for a flank angle, he might be able to catch Sutsujin, but no. Back up close by, so he's all alone, stranded in an island, wow. just becoming a distraction for the TLID cavalry to take down the Lord. Interesting play right there. Witty with the movement speed bonus from the passive, actually going and threatening the bottom side. And again, RRQ can't afford to split apart from each other. This almost seems like the same idea with the Yif Natan, just with a different format with the with the Faramis Irithel, but. It's just not the same kind of shred. There'll be more bursts available by Skylar, but he needs to find the right targets. Technically against the Assassin, it can work, but with the hard guard, this is why that Angeline combo is just so difficult to deal with. And especially with the fleeting time available, there will be no hesitation from Yeheskiel to just pop that hard guard again and again. And Fabian, man, he is just up there at this point. Got this Uwe combo is working. At its best for RQ to defend their base, but now can they hold the second lord marching in? Chuck load my blade. And the top of the blades. Lord, huh, will not be utilized to its fullest. RQ dealt with it quite well. Is that a loss, Rashi? I think that is a loss. Team Liquid ID get some ways to push to clear on their own, denying gold from their Team Liquid ID members. 
and then the waves can get caught by our cue, no problem. There was no dangerous moment there that can, they can go for a fight, they can, they can punish. They did not get more damage or too much damage onto the base turrets. Came a good idea. It really felt like they didn't really set up the waves at all there. Yeah, it was all just time dust that the Lord evaporated in mere seconds by RRQ. And it feels like it's harder to be able to lay claim on the backline of RRQ. The fact that they, they have a lot of layers before they could access their hands towards Skylar. Uh oh. Would it? No, whoa, God, wait. We gotta reflect this. Oh, Fabian gunned down. Well, now it's starting to hurt. Now that hard guard isn't able to save him all that well. A run. So able to run away. Fabian clearing up top. CLID escaping from the punches of RRQ. Look at that, though. Three ultimates for the side of Team Liquid. Now, the, the full beast doesn't really count, but RRQ are forced to just blow everything almost immediately. That is the amount of danger that they can sense from Team Liquid ID. But especially for Fabian, he needs to be very careful right now. Does. Worst damage, right? Assassins, surprisingly, are quite weak to it from the Erythra, from the Beatrix. We've seen it before. So three hits in the late game will be enough. Two. Whoa, look at that. Wow. Fabian able to react in time. That would have been game changing had that hit. And now for TLID, of course, they want to bank on Fabian, but Adam Shiki hasn't been able to see much of daylight with the damage that he's supposed to deal with the way that he was supposed to dive to the back line of RRQ, but it seems like he's not getting the, the air time that he needs. Why not just unfortunate for Team Liquid that the Lunox pick allowed them to be so aggressive to just bully Skylar, but now in the late game, when they just go for the big engage and they use all the ultimates, it's almost like game over, right? RRQ, if they can survive the initial burst, will be able to do, all, to do a lot more damage, but Tsutsujin need to be careful. Preemptive plays have been rampant in Season 14. Now it feels like they want to try to contest the Lord, but this time around TLID is just juggling it. Enticing RRQ to come inside. They can't. Shroud in secrecy, they have this done. They get the third Lord. Courtesy of Adam Chiki. And again, the Kings are forced into their own castle against Skylar Dome. Ooh, wow. Around able to stop that engage from happening. Only a mere few seconds, almost 9,000 damage. The fact that Weedy was able to just radio sense them out and the over the leftover damage actually splashed over to Aaron, taking him down to almost half. That's a lot of burst damage. 401 and 4. Skylar hasn't technically been shut down completely. Mm -hmm. It's only a 5k gold difference. And we've seen that with the right composition, even 10k can be mitigated by the, the base, by the safety that the base provides for you. Around though, going more and more tanky. Ooh, the damage though. Ridiculous damage. In and out. Ridiculous healing too. And that was a holy crystal purchased by Yeskill. Yeah, Nobody around walking up. Oh my god. Now goes over the hurt over two. Ready Sandstorm onto them. It's not gonna be enough to take anyone down. Just another round right now. It's just gonna be one member taken out. Sutujin still able to deal with the waves. They hold that to this block come from Tyron! Fabian will be caught! He buys the immortality, but I don't think he can live. He buys the winter crown, the usurper is hard to kill! Oh, but he is not immortal! Is this the turnaround the kingdom is looking for? They defend their castle and they will advance forward. The risky play by Team Ruben ID and they did not even get a base tower for their troubles. In the bottom lane, it was saved. RRQ with 22 seconds before Fabian, the menace, the usurper is back on the map to have an impact. They can use this to set up all the traps, all the pressure. Look at the rings. Ready, set, stop! And Aaron Shiki capitalizes! Now with a hard guard onto Aaron, as in a half chain onto two. Aaron still able to miss out some damage with a crown of immortality built by Sutsujin. So the have the photo and then half chain forward. TLID now on the chase. The cavalry they advance. Will charge. Willie walks forward. Tyron tied up by Yeskill. He will be mobilized. He will be taken out. Yeskill is on a killing spree. And TLID have been able to bait RRQ out of their castle now. Another siege into the base. No Netherrealm. Just yet. You have to wait. Sutsujin so will use the half sword to escape. That's a certainly eagle. He's out with a flicker. In front of pursuit, Skylar forward, another round coming down now. Sister Jane trying to clear out the way that he won't be able to do it right now. But no, the cannon minion! What cannon minion was on it took? TLID!